So what are you putting on? We've got a little Euro Zebra Midge with a little wing, emerger wing on it. And a little itty bitty red blingish midge variation deal. Just trying to a see yidge. if I can see it. The b midge. The yidge. <laughs> right next to me. Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for a new series that we have called Bug of the Month. This is a new series that we're going to be bringing to you all year and each month highlighting a, a different insect. And this is going to go kind of like learning about it, learning how to fish it, and, and then learning how to tie it. So this is our first one and we are starting in January. And what are we talking about in January? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's winter time so we're going to be talking about midges, the predominant food source for trout this time of year is going to be midges so it's going to be your key to success uh, pulling in fish or getting them to your net um, so you're definitely going to want to know how to fish those guys and we're going to do our best to give you that information. Yeah and midges are actually not only important in January but they're important year-round. Um, it's the only constant food source that the fish have so while you know in the middle of the summer when we have some different mayflies going some caddis flies stuff like that there's also midges in the mix and I'll just give you a little tip here. You want to fish midges year round. They're especially important in the winter time. Absolutely. All right guys, so since we are talking about midges, it's going to be obviously very important to kind of know what a midge is and understand their life cycle in order to be successful fishing them. So the way I kind of like to think about them is they really they look like a mosquito, but they don't bite. So we'll hop over to John here and have him tell you about the life cycle of a midge. Yeah, midges actually have a complete life cycle. So it's larval stage, then a pupating stage. They do emerge and then there are adults. So a lot of times they look like just tiny little worms and there's thousands and thousands of subspecies of midges. We don't really bother to break them down any more than it's just a midge. I joke around a lot and say if it's so small I can't tell what it is, it's a midge. And that's kind of an easy rule of thumb to go about it. But it's really important to understand that. In that larva stage, that's when fish really consume them uh, voraciously. Uh, they'll also eat them as emergers or in that pupating stage. So all stages of that midge's life cycle you really want to pay attention to. In the same, like we've talked about before, this is a great way to figure out what's in the river great way to figure out how to match uh, your fly patterns to what's in the river. So Hans is going to help me here. Um, these little seines are great. Landing net seines, they go right over your landing net, folds up really small, can take it everywhere with you. And what we're going to do here is we're going to pick kind of a riffly area here where there's a lot of different size rocks. So if you have a buddy, you can see the buddy from there. And just get one person upstream. One person downstream, I'm just going to jam this net to the bottom of the river and pick up everything that Hans is picking up here. Okay, we 
got a lot of substrate in here. And since it is winter time, we're kind of specifically looking for some midges in here. It's a real small one. There's a caddis and a midge. There's more caddis right there. Yeah. Ooh, I may have lost him. Here's a big caddis. Yeah. This is a great way to just, especially if you've never been somewhere, or you've never been to a river you're going to fish, or you haven't been to that river for a long time. Uh, this is a really good tool to figure out how to, what fly patterns you're going to use. And we're finding lots, lots of caddis. Of caddis. Man. And a surprising amount of caddis. Yeah. This looks just like Yep, Juan's pale ale. Great edge. A little tiny caddis. Yep. Man, all sorts of different sizes. Ooh, Here's another. Is that a scud? Look. There's a scud. Oh, yeah. Another midge. Caddis. Or is that a little caddis? Oh, yeah. A little tiny guy. Wow. Wow. Yeah, just caddis all over. <laughs> There's a ton of caddis flies. That's a big one right there. Oh, that's a green fly. That's a green fly, yeah. Look, it's shaped like a hook even. Wow, yeah. yeah. That... Just need something that kind of looks like it. That'll work. That'll, yep, yeah, that is. One of the easiest places to start is at the larva. You're going to see a lot of common patterns in the fly shop. Black beauties, uh, pale midge, thousands of, there. yeah, billions of patterns out there. And then you can move up into more of the pupating stage like the medallion midge or the blindside midge. And the next stage is the pupating stage or the emerger stage of that midge. And that's an action stage of the insect. So trout love action stages of bugs. Anytime there's a transformation, trout will really key in on that. So you see it a lot of times with mayfly hatches when they're emerging, trout are just going nuts. Actually the same thing will happen with midges. And then of course we're gonna get to the adult stage. Um, in the adult stage, again, it's pretty sporadic, but I always have a dry fly rod with me in the winter too, because you will get those opportunities where you can get into some good midge hatches on the surface. And some of my favorite patterns are a good old Griffiths gnat or a Matt's midge, or even really, really small mole flies. And in terms of when we want to focus on these bugs being very active, especially in the winter time, everything kind of changes. Everything follows the sun, no matter what time of year it is. So in the winter time, we have a really low sun angle. And what happens there is the, the river never has a chance to really warm up or cool down. It's more of a constant. It does warm up slightly and cool down slightly, but it's more of a constant temperature. And so the midge activity is gonna be really kind of prolific between kind of that 10 a.m in 2 p.m. time, so it's almost the middle of the day. In the summertime, that's the worst time to fish. In the wintertime, that's the best time to fish. And while we all wish we could fish dry flies year-round, the fact of the matter is that trout eat about 80% of their diet under the, the water. Uh, you can get in some pretty good dry fly fishing midges in the wintertime, but everything's really got to kind of line up. So. Pretty much when we're thinking about midges, we're primarily thinking about subsurface or nymphs. Absolutely, and there are several ways you can go about approaching setting up your nymph rig, depending on kind of what you prefer to do. 
Um, John out here today is set up with an indicator rig, kind of a static nymph rig, the type of rig that most people are going to be familiar with. But just because we're out here fishing midges doesn't necessarily mean you can't do it on a Euro rod. So I'm out here today and I've been fishing the Euro setup midge fishing. Um, and there are Euro patterns that are very, very small, just like you can fish on a standard uh, indicator nymph rig. There are Euro patterns that are real small and heavy and meant to get down, and you can certainly fish those in the winter as well. All right, now thinking about this from a Euro nymphing standpoint, a lot of the bugs you're familiar with that you would use on a conventional indicator rig for nymphing, they make European versions of. So it's basically the same pattern with just an oversized bead on it. So today I'm fishing what's very similar to a zebra midge here. It's just got an oversized tungsten bead on it and that's my heaviest fly. And then I'm fishing just your normal run of the mill bling midge up here off of my dropper tag. Now, when I'm rigging for this, I'm gonna, it's gonna vary depending on pattern. If I'm fin fishing one of those uh, larva type patterns, usually I'm gonna have my weight up on the dropper tag and the larva behind it because I want that larva to ride low close to the bottom of the river. Contrary to that, if I'm fishing a pattern that's supposed to represent more of a pupating or emerging type midge, I'm gonna fish that up on the dropper tag and my weight down on point, and that's gonna keep that emerging pattern a little higher in the water column where you're typically gonna see uh, those pupating midges. All right guys, so from a fishing aspect, I'm gonna fish this, I'm gonna fish these nymphs. Same way I would really fish any Euro rig, we're at a nice area in the river here where it kind of is a bit shallow and then gets a bit deeper. So what I'm going to do, a nice thing about the Euro setup is I don't have to re-rig for different water depths. So as my flies are over in the shallower area of the water, I'm going to have a more shallow angle on my, uh, I'm going to have a more shallow angle on my cider material. And then as it gets to the deeper water, I'm going to have a more steep angle. That's going to allow me to fish different depths of water without having to change flies or re-rig. And then back to static nymphing, and this is the nymphing that most people do. So where you, where you have a strike indicator, your leader, and all your flies are tied in a row there, um, all in line. You could kind of do the same thing. So I'm going to put my action stage of my bug on, on the very bottom of my rig. So any of the pupa or emerging type bugs, I'm gonna have on the very back. So they get more action, they're gonna stay a little higher in the water column with my larvas and stuff closer to the weight to keep those down closer to the river bottom where they're, uh, where they're actually at. Now for you to look at a static nymphing rig here with a strike indicator, my weights, my flies all in a, a row here. First thing I'm gonna do, it's kind of the general rule of fishing with an indicator is I wanna be about one and a half to two times the depth of the water. Um, this is, like Han said, a transition point, so shallow to deep, um, but it's faster in the shallow water, so I'm not probably gonna to have to do much to my rig right off the bat. But the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I'm close. So the only way to do that is to take a couple drifts and make sure I'm not snagging the bottom, make sure I'm getting good clean drifts through there. And I'm sitting here working this seam, the same seam that Hans was working with the Euro rig. So honestly, you fish these very similar, the flies just behave differently. And I'm gonna look for those easier parts of the water, um, the softer parts where fish are gonna be apt to hanging out and eating instead of the really, really super heavy stuff. One thing to note is with the fact that trout eat about 80% of their diet under the water, you're primarily going to be nymphing the midge pattern. Um, so stick with that unless you're actually seeing surface activity. And if you're seeing fish rising on top, that's when you'd want to switch to a dry fly. Now, in addition to our bug of the month, we are going to put out some tying videos that are going to go over covering all the different life cycle stages of the midge pattern. So we will go over patterns representing the larva stage, the pupa stage, and then the adult as well. So make sure you keep your eye out for that. As always, if you guys have any questions on anything we've covered today, don't hesitate to come into the shop and ask us. We're happy to help. That's what we're here for. We look forward to seeing you next time.
Look at all that. Some more midges. Oh, yeah, they're all.